I had never done anything remotely like it before. I hadn't done a horror movie before. So it was uh, a little startling, but I was ready to go. I thought, well, this will be interesting, and it sure was. <laughs> It's only after I'm telling people, oh, I'm going to do this film, and Sam Raimi's directing, and people would immediately go, oh, the evil dad, Bruce Campbell, the car, and people would go crazy. I think, what have I missed all these years? <laughs> it was a blast. I had no anticipation I would enjoy it so much. It was a blast. Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. When I auditioned for it, I auditioned initially, of course, for the casting director, John Papsidera. I did not see the full script. So, fine, I was called in to do, uh, for a callback with Sam. And at that time, I saw a little bit more of the script, but I hadn't seen the entire script. It was only later uh, that I saw the full script. <laughs> I thought, what have I got myself in for? Will you help me? To be honest, I wasn't sure about this because as I, you know, I, I was not, uh, horror was not my genre necessarily. So I was intrigued by it and I thought it would certainly be an interesting adventure, but I wasn't sure until we really got going with the uh, production, how I felt about it. Of course, I came to love it. <laughs> Sam was terrific to work with. I mean, nobody can say anything bad about Sam Raimi to me. He likes to know what actors think, and he's very considerate, uh, and so he's a delight to work with from that, from that standpoint. Now, aside from the fact that he had this kind of courtly manner, and you think, hmm, he's got a little twinkle, you know, and you know that's where this stuff lives, <laughs> that he puts on the screen when he does horror because he has that element of humor. And you can see those, those ideas forming sometimes in his mind and see that little twinkle come into his eyes and then you know, uh-oh, we're up for something here. <laughs> but he was great. The bank is informing you of their intent to repossess your property at 325 Brandon Street today. But this is my home for 30 years. And I make every payment until the sickness took my eye. I hope to have more money soon. I just need a little more time. The bank scene was the first scenes that I was involved in. So it was all new stuff that day. And it does set up the character of who the woman is. Because if you don't buy this lady then, you're not going to understand her revenge uh, that occurs later. I am proud woman, Miss Bravo. And never have I begged for anything. Sylvia Garmush is a very proud lady. Obviously someone with rigorous set of beliefs. On my mother's grave, I beg you. She has her idea of what's right and what's wrong, and uh, she assumes that everybody else has the same idea. Unfortunately, they don't. But I think the thing that sets her off initially is arises out of that pride. But She's so convinced initially that she's done her job, she's pleaded with this girl, she's gonna go, she's gonna come back and say, sure, we'll, t you know. And then when she doesn't, it's shocking and it's shameful. You shame me. You know, from her perspective, was totally not necessary and that is the lowest of the awful things you could do to a person. And it just immediately sets her off. She doesn't have in between. She goes from here to here. <laughs> she is so outraged and so humiliated by the experience that it's the beginning of where she goes from there. We don't know where she's going from there at that point, 
except that she's really mad. I think that's the main thing that is set up in that particular scene. In my house, the men are packing all my things, private things. The uh, production sent me to Berlitz to work with a Hungarian dialect coach. When I did the audition, I kind of did my, not knowing specifically what that accent was, I just kind of did my garden variety, all-purpose Eastern European accent, which interestingly enough, turned out to be very close to what uh, would be appropriate. Uh, I worked with a great lady there. We worked on the accent and words that I can use just to throw at her. There's a word for bitch, which I oh, could use. Let's hear that. Sci-ha. <laughs> so it was really great to have the opportunity to work with her. We just worked together once, um, but it was very helpful and, and very useful. The first shooting we did on the fight scene in the car was in a parking garage that was, you know, quite grim, which was great because it was exactly what was called for but not very comfortable. It was really interesting to me to shoot. Sam, of course, had ideas about what he wanted to happen, and he would kind of describe what he wanted from moment to moment. Our stunt doubles were there, Allison's stunt double and my stunt double, Anna, were there. And they'd give us, you know, hints about things, how you make this look effective, what makes, you know, which was terrific. Allison and I both wanted to do as much of the work as we possibly could. So we were able to do quite a bit of it uh, in that uh, situation. They were very long days. They were grueling days, as you can imagine. And I, I'll never forget that, you know, the bit where she's in the car, I'm outside, I disappear, and I come up with a, a cement block. <laughs> That was like at 13th hour or something, late at night. And I'd get down there and I'd think, I'll never be able to stand up again. You know, but it was like, Ugh! you know, I was ready to throw that thing through the window. So it was really interesting, really interesting and, and grueling work. <laughs> Later, we revisited that fight scene a gazillion times on set with the puzzle car. They have a car that would come apart and we, they could shoot close-up bits, uh, like the when I'm chewing on her chin. We just shot and shot and shot on that thing. I said to Sam, at one point, you're gonna have more pieces of film than Hitchcock had in the shower scene in Psycho. But it was all really interesting stuff because it was all new stuff to me some of the techniques to be able to do that. So it was great. As Urdu sai on bed. My favorite moment in the fight scene is the curse scene. It was interesting technically. But it's also, I guess, partly because that moment is really about a lot about the acting, as opposed to, am I putting my mouth in the correct position for a ruler to go crashing down into my throat, you know. An interesting thing that I learned in that scene that uh, I really had not thought of much before, there's a very close scene when, right after I do the Lamia with the button, there's a tight shot on me. And Sam said something about, just turn, just move your eyes. When I first saw that on the screen, I thought, wow, that's really cool. I mean, it, look, it was menacing looking, just that one little moment. And of course, it's, I mean, it's juicy, as you know. Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. I just, I like that, I like that bit. But that's my favorite. I need to see her. I need her to forgive me. And I'll get her the house back. And you're gonna make everything all right for her, is that it? Yes. Forgiveness is not in the picture. She's made a commitment, this is part of her belief. What has been done to her is, is so important that I don't think the notion of forgiving this young woman would even enter her mind. 
She's committed to the revenge. She's committed and she's cursed her. And once she's cursed her, she's brought in powers that are beyond her. She's now invited the power of the Lamia into this situation. She can't turn back at that point and she can't decide, oh, oh, it's okay, dear, I, I won't, you know. It's, it's past that, it's way past that. You deserve everything that is coming to you. So regardless of how much the character pleads with me, it's too late. I have now cursed her, and that's a power way beyond me. As an offended woman, I have introduced the power of the Lamia, and it's too late to think about forgiveness. <laughs> Some of the things are really gross, of course, in that film. That's Sam's sense of humor coming out. He would say to me every now and then, like, Lorna, I'm sorry to have to ask you to do this, but I got to do it for all the nine-year-olds out there. One of them was that mucus thing in the bank, where I'm like, you know, it's just coming out of me. It's really quite disgusting. I've got that handkerchief, which is all full of snot, and you know. I mean, that's that's part of Sam's sensibility. You know, his movies have, a, have humor in them. They're not just straight, scary horror. They almost have a comic book sensibility in some, uh, in some situations with the, with the anvil falling on my head, you know. That's one of the things that I like about his work, actually, that it, it does have that little, you know, those little funny bits that can be either gross funny or just funny funny, you know. <laughs> well, there were a, a number of scenes at the wake and the scene in the bed where she wakes up and finds me lying beside her and I vomit maggots or spaghetti on her. And then, of course, at the wake, uh, also more vomiting. They did a life cast of my head. I was not looking forward to that. I'm a little claustrophobic and I thought, Oy. but um, the guys at k &B were the people who did the special effects. Wonderful. They were wonderful. So we did a, one with a neutral expression. And when we finished that, um, they said, oh, Lorna, you were great. That was good. Would you do another one for us when you're screaming? So I did. One of those was used in the uh, wake scene. Also, they used that in the grave at the end, the corpse. They used those life casts in a lot of different ways, um, including, um, you know, putting the features on these puppets, some of which were, like, you know, just, they were just kind of floppy, but it conveyed the, the sense of a full body. <laughs> Mrs. Garnish does prevail. She wins the contest. Uh, it's too late for, for Alice's character to um, excuse herself from what she's done. She made a moral uh, error. She made a decision that was immoral, really. Uh, she knew she was making the wrong decision when she refused the money. She did it purely self in self-interest, and um, it was too late. There's, of course, Justin left with the button, which I thought, well, maybe they're gonna do a follow-up of this, and we, then we see what happens. To, would the Allison character come back? I mean, you know, it's it, the ending leaves it open a little bit as to possibility, uh, there are possibilities that something, that there's a life after what we're seeing on the screen. <laughs> When I saw the movie the first time, it was uh, the full, the finished product uh, was on the Universal lot. They did a special screening there. When I left there, I was with my agent. He said, Lorna, nobody's recognizing you. And I said to him, if comes the day when people recognize me on the street for this movie, I'm in deep trouble. So it's perfectly fine with me that nobody's recognizing me. But. I get a kick out of it because it has, I like Sam's style. It's got all of that. It's, it's scary, it's funny, it's got a mixture. So I can enjoy that in a way that I might not enjoy a more, you know, straight horror film. People say, did you have fun making that movie? It was a blast. I had no idea it would be so much fun that I would enjoy it so much. 
There are people who just love it, and it's it's kind of rewarding for that uh, to be expressed. So, but it was a blast. Yeah.